the 2015 NCHA World Finals. I'm here with the non-pro world champion, Joe Howard Williamson. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you very much, ma'am. Appreciate it. Now, you came into this event some $30,000 ahead of the second place um, getter. What were you thinking? What was your game plan? That you could just have fun now or you were still taking it really seriously? Well, I think maybe mathematically there was still a chance that, uh, that Mary Jo could catch me. And uh, you never count her out and because she's the best. And, uh, but I, I really thought, you know, with any luck at all, you know, I'd get along the first night and, and uh, not have to worry about that. And uh, yes, I kind of just decided to try to go show my horse the best I could, but I didn't always, I didn't show all that good the first two nights. I got a check both times. Things didn't really go all that good, but tonight things come together. I had still had a late draw tonight, but I marked a 221, and I, I believe I got a check, and I was real proud of my horse and, and glad that I, you know, got through a run and showed good and everything to end the year up. Now, as you say, you you had quite a few actually really tough competitors. Mary Jo Milner was one, Dan Hansen. I mean, they've won several world championships each. How did it feel competing against them all year? Well, it, it, it it's tough competing, and, and there's lots of people that haven't won the world uh, that are tough competitors too. And uh, this is my fourth time to win the world, but I can promise you one thing. There's probably uh, uh, 20 or 30 or more people out there that can show just as good or better than I can so I'm very aware of that and I count it a real privilege to be able to show against those people and also be able to come out on top sometimes. So what made you want to chase it this year? Oh you know I don't know um, um, I'm 61 and and you know I don't know how long my reflexes will be good enough to compete at this level and uh, I had a real nice horse in the and in the very first year um, he became crippled really after the first 10 days. I went to 10 cuttings and I believe I won all 10 of them. And I thought, okay, here we go. Well, I come out of the house and go to feed the next morning after the 10th show and he's crippled. And um, I had my other horse, Woody's Bad Boy, who is a great horse and just as good as the, that horse I'm talking about. I got on him and um, really had a lot of success at Augusta and West Monroe, Louisiana on him. And uh, I just decided, you know what, that other horse might get well, and I'm just going to run at it because I had a lot of money won real early. And uh, the other horse didn't get well um, all that quick, and he's just now really getting well. But I bought another couple of horses, and I had one old horse, nothing but a hound dog. And I believe he's 16 or 17. I even showed him some. So I showed five horses this year, and um, it really increased my horsemanship and helped me cut better and everything because I had to adapt every time I changed horses. Sometimes I'd change horses every day. So I had to cut the kind of cattle that fit them. I had to ride them better. I had to have a lot of help. Austin Shepard helped me a lot. Matt Gaines helped me a bunch with them. Several other people did too. So I had to have a lot of help to, to make the change over every day. You can't do it on your own, can you? I can't. Maybe somebody can. Maybe somebody can. I don't know. I can't. I learned a long time ago. This is 21 years. I believe I've made the World Finals in a row, and uh, I can tell you one thing: that if you do it by yourself, that's very unusual. And something else, you're awful lonesome. Yes, and I mean being on the road. That's part of what everybody loves because life can be tough, as you well know. Uh, and it's the community that really makes it memorable, wouldn't you say? Yes, it's the people you meet and the experiences you have that really is what you carry on in life. Congratulations. God bless you. Thank you.